The Milburn Stone Theater presents an MST audio production of The Tsar and Tsaritsa, a dramatic interpretation of the personal letters of the last Tsar of Russia, Nicholas II, his wife, Tsaritsa Alexandra, and their families during the last era of the Romanov dynasty. Episode 1. Having previously visited Russia for her sister Ella's wedding to Nikki's uncle Sergei, 17-year-old Princess Alex of Hesrhein returned to Russia for the winter. During her visit, she reunites with the 20-year-old Tsarevich Nikolai Alexandrovich Romanov, and the spark of romance from their previous encounter ignites into a flame. Upon her return to Darmstadt, Alex and Nikki begin their correspondence. Alex to Nikki, March 17, 1889, Darmstadt. Dearest Nikki, so many thanks for your note enclosed in Xenia's letter. It was so good of you to write, and it gave me great pleasure. My mad letter amused you then all. Well, I have been cracked enough to write another. We went last night to see the Rheingold, and I hope next week to see Valkyrie Siegfried. But now I must say goodbye as I am going out driving. Heavier loving, Alex. Many messages to Georgie the Weeping Willow. We have quite warm weather. Papa and Ernie are gone now out shooting. Nikki to Alex, April 2nd, 1889. Gachina. Dearest Alex, thank you so much for your dear little letter, which is such an agreeable surprise to me. I just returned from town yesterday in the night when it came. We also saw Siegfried with Ella. I like it so awfully, especially the melody of the bird and the fire. Now the Nibelungen are all over, and I think it a great pity. The other day I also got a frame from Ella with her, you, and Ernie in it. I find it charming, and she painted around the photo the best remembrances of the winter. There is the ice, the big hall, the skates, <laughs> a clown, the window with three lights, a cotillion ribbon and a basket with flowers from Aunt Sasha Narichkin's ball, the badminton articles, a branch of pink flowers from the Mardi Gras festival, and best of all, the Mikado, squinting in his famous way. She gave me two, you and her together in Tsar Caselo ball dresses, a charming photo which is constantly before me. The last week there was a concert at Uncle Sergei and Ellis. I saw the Vorinsov's Dolgorukis in the little arrangement. I thought of the goat the whole time. Please tell Ernie I shot my first bear today. With much love, ever your loving Nikki. Nikki to Alex, May 23rd, 1889, Zars Caselo. Darling Alex, just a wee line to send you my very best wishes on your birthday, which is in two days. I am now here in the Hazars, serving with delight. I see Ella rather often, and we always speak about your stay in Petersburg. It seems to have been so long ago. I don't remember such a spring with such heats. Have you heard about the betrothal of the eldest Montenegrin with Peter? The Shah of Persia was too funny during his stay in Russia. God bless you, dearest Alex. One of the Peli party, Nikki. Alex to Nikki, June 9th, 1889. Dearest Nikki, so many thanks for your dear letter, which gave me great pleasure. It was so kind of you to remember the old Toad's birthday. Yes, it does seem like a long time since we were at Petersburg. Ella to Nikki. June 19th, 1889, St. Petersburg. Darling Nikki, the whole day I have been thinking and thinking about our conversation. And your little note I have just received gave me such pleasure, most hearty thanks. Of course I told Sergei, but nobody else will know a word of it. Do you know that I was told that if one prayed well in a church going to be consecrated, God would hear one's prayers? Well, in Jerusalem and in Paul's house, I prayed so deeply for you both, to bring you together in love for each other. I wrote today to Alex and told her that we had a long chat yesterday, and also about her, and that you recall with such pleasure the visit of this winter, and the pleasure of having seen her, and might I give you kind messages from her. More distinctively, I dared not say... You will do that once. God grant all will go well. 
Faith and love go very far, and if you have faith in him and each other, all will be for the best. Many affectionate kisses from Sergei and your loving auntie. Nikki to Alex, October 1889, St. Petersburg. Just a line or two, darling Alex, as Toria finished her letter on the other page to show the goat that I have not quite forgotten it. I am also going to Greece for Tino's wedding. I am sure it will be charming. Passing through Kiel on my way to Hanover, I lunch with dear Irene at the Schloss and saw the sweet baby. How is the squirrel? So now goodbye with best love. I remain your loving Nikki. One of the Pelly party. <laughs> Kiss Ernie for me. eighteen ninety three though apart for several years, Alex always held a special place in Nikki's heart. While Alex had other offers of marriage, she refused them, leaving a glimmer of hope for Nikki that she would convert to orthodoxy so that they could be married. In their letters, Nikki and Alex had adopted code names for each other, Pelly one for Alex and Pelly two for Nikki, both with swap pronouns. In the following letter, Ella uses those code names to make clandestine plans for Nikki and Alex to meet so that Alex might be convinced to convert. Ella to Nikki, October 20th, 1893, Darmstadt. Dearest Nikki, here at last is my letter about Pelly One. He is just as ever no changement, and you remember our conversations before. Well, I wish to let you know, all perfectly clearly, after different conversations, he gave in to see Pelly too. But wishing her to understand that in spite of the depth and unaltering sentiment, he has not the courage to change his religion. Only I repeated that Pelly too longed to see him and speak it out. Well, dear, much hope there is not, and he begs me to tell you not to misunderstand him. But my idea is that seeing Pelly too talking with her, perhaps God will give him the courage to do a thing for love which now seems to him impossible. I don't mention the Pelly's names, as really one never knows if the post does not read the letters, and as I know how important and what deep interest you take in their fate, I write thus. Please tell Pelly's parents all I say so that in case, God grant it may not be so, nothing comes of their meetings, they may not reprove Pelly one of having given false hopes. I promise to write all as it is, and hope you understand in spite of all, I hope that love may conquer and be too strong and his love is so deep and pure, and the poor creature so utterly miserable, that it makes one's heart ache that religion should come between. They both must pray. And oh, I do so hope as all their difficulties have passed. If Pelly too consents, she should telegraph me, all right. Then Sergei will write to the person who invited us for Easter, and we would go together to pay a visit and meet Pelly too there. You must answer directly. Pelly too might do as if she were traveling in different towns or simply pay a visit of congratulations. As they are raining now, papers will always talk if they meet or do not meet, so that must not be the trouble. May I now say my opinion. This is her last and only chance. She must come now or it is a finished thing forever. Whereas if they meet, who knows? It is so difficult to refuse accepting the only being you love since years for whom the heart has been suffering to be separated. Pelly once said he would die for his love, and if they speak, perhaps the real barrier which has kept them apart will melt before the words of love from Pelly too. Don't you hope so, and pray so for their happiness. May God bless those poor darlings. Ask the Father Ioan of Kronstadt to come and see Pelly too. Bless her and pray with her. She wants God's help more than ever usually in life. Please, please do tell her so now, dear. Courage to speak to her and say all. And may she come and we meet her soon. Kind messages from all to you and a hearty kiss from your old friend and aunt, Ella. Nikki to Alex, October 31st, 1893. Gotcha. Dearest Alex, Please excuse this boldness of mine, of writing a few lines to tell you how sorry I was, and how I deeply regret not to have been able to come and see you while Ella stayed with you. But after our returning from Denmark, a lot of important matters, one about Georgie, who is luckily quite well now, kept me back from going. 
You may well imagine my disappointment at losing such a splendid and easy chance of flying off to Pelly after such a long, long time. Berlin and all those ceremonies and function for Margaret's wedding, where we generally used to be about a half a mile from each other, cannot be called a pleasant meeting. And for you poor thing especially, it must be of a disagreeable recollection, as you suffered so from an earache. I do hope you are quite well and that awful pain has not come back. If you don't mind, wouldn't you send me a photo of yours? Uh, one of the new ones, like those you sent to Xenia lately? I would be so happy to have one near me. I have to go often to town to my regiment, and whenever I look into our garden at Anikov, I always think of that lovely time on the ice, <laughs> which seems now to be a dream. And now goodbye, my darling Pelly. God bless you and help you in all the troubles of life. Ever your devoted Nikki. Alex to Xenia, November 8th, 1893, Darmstadt. Darling Xenia, a good kiss and fondest thanks for your dear letter. It was such a pleasure hearing again from you. Yes, do continue writing to me. Don't let what I am going to tell you put a stop to our friendship and correspondence. My photo and a letter I have sent through Ella to Nicky. In it, he will see that I cannot change my decision. I cannot become untrue to my own confession. Do not believe that my love is less. Why, that has made it so far more hard and difficult to me, and I have been torturing myself. To hurt one whom one loves is fearful, and yet I don't want him to go on hoping, as I can never change my religion. God bless the dear, and may he not think ill of his old Pelly. I feel too upset to write any more. Your old Alex. Let me sometimes hear from you, may I? Don't let us quite drift apart. That would be too hard. Alex to Nikki. November 8th, 1893, Darmstadt. Dearest Nikki, I send you my very best thanks for your dear letter and enclose the photograph you wish to have and which Ella will forward to you. I believe it must have been a stronger will than ours which ordained that we should not meet at Coburg, for like this it gives me the chance to write to you all my innermost feelings which perhaps on the spur of the moment I might not have said so that you may have misunderstood me. You know what my feelings are, as Ella has told them to you already, but I feel it my duty to tell them to you myself. I thought everything for a long time, and I only beg you not to think that I take it lightly, for it grieves me terribly and makes me very unhappy. I have tried to look at it in every light that is possible, but I always return to one thing. I cannot do it against my conscience. You, dear Nicky, who have also such a strong belief, will understand me that I think it a sin to change my belief, and I should be miserable all the days of my life knowing that I had done a wrongful thing. I am certain that you would not wish me to change against my conviction. What happiness can come from a marriage which begins without the real blessing of God? For I feel it a sin to change that belief in which I have been brought up and which I love. I should never find my peace of mind again, and like that I should never be your real companion who should help you on in life, for there always should be something between us two in my not having the real conviction of the belief I had taken, and in the regret for the one I had left. It would be acting a lie to you, your religion, and to God. This is my feeling of right and wrong, and one's innermost religious convictions and one's peace of conscience towards God before all one's earthly wishes. As all the years have not made it possible for me to change my resolution in acting thus, I feel that now is the moment to tell you again that I can never change my confession. I am certain that you will understand this clearly and see as I do that we are only torturing ourselves about something impossible and it would not be a kindness to let you go on having vain hopes which will never be realized. And now, goodbye, my darling Nikki, and may God bless and protect you. Ever your loving, Alex. Mm. 
Nikki to Alex, December 17th, 1893, Gachina. My dearest Alex, please excuse my not having answered your letters sooner, but you may well imagine what a blow it proved to me. I could not write to you all these days on account of the sad state of mind I was in. Now that my restlessness has passed, I feel more calm and I'm able to answer your letter quietly. Let me thank you, first of all, for the frank and open way in which you spoke to me in that letter. Uh, there's nothing worse in the world than things misunderstood and not brought to the point. I knew from the beginning what an obstacle there rose between us, and I felt so deeply for you all these years, knowing perfectly the great difficulties you have had to overcome. But still, it is so awfully hard when you have cherished a dream for many a year and think... Now you are near to it being realized, and then suddenly the curtain is drawn, and you only see an empty space and feel so lonely and so beaten down. I cannot deny the reasons you give me, dear Alex, but I have also got one which is also true. You hardly know the depth of our religion. If only you could have learned it with somebody who knows it and could have read books or you might see the likeness and the difference of the two. Perhaps then it would not have troubled you in the same way as it does now. Your living quite alone, without anyone's help in such a matter, is also a sad circumstance in the barrier that apparently stands between us. It is too sad for words to know that the barrier is religion. Don't you think, dearest, that the five years since we've known each other have passed in vain with no result? Certainly not for me, at least. And how am I to change my feelings after waiting and wishing for so long, even now after that sad letter you sent me? I trust in God's mercy. Maybe it is his will that we both, but you especially, should suffer long. And maybe after helping us through all these miseries and trials, he will yet guide my darling along the path that I dearly pray for. And, and do not say no directly, my dearest Alex. Do not ruin my life already. Don't you think there can exist any happiness in the whole world without you? After having involuntarily kept me waiting and hoping, can this end in such a way? And, and do not get angry with me now if I'm beginning to say silly things, though I promised in this letter to be calm. Your heart is too kind not to understand what tortures I am going through now. But I have spoken enough, it must end this epistle of mine. Thank you so much for your charming photo. Let me wish, dearest Alex, that the coming year may bring you peace, happiness, comfort, and the fulfillment of your wishes. God bless you and protect you, ever your loving and devoted Nikki. This has been an episode of The Tsar and Tsaritsa, a product of the Milburn Stone Theatre at Cecil College, produced and edited by William Bryan. This episode features the voices of Faith Sullivan, Michael Anderson, Lily Worth, and Tom Worthington. For more details, please visit milburnstone.com.